Okay, since we already started on the topic of women's rights and equality last week, it only seems appropriate to touch on the tennis battle of the sexes over equal pay. This has been a hot topic that stirs up a lot of turmoil for a very long time now. I didn't have any idea we we're gonna get different prize money. I go, what? He got 2,000, I got 750. There are a couple of things that seem to primarily drive the men's argument here. One, the men have to play three out of five sets at the slams, whereas the women only play two out of three. And then the second major argument is that the men's matches are a bigger draw and sell more tickets than the women's. Novak Djokovic shoved his foot all the way down his throat when he said in a press conference that he believed the men should be awarded more for these reasons, but then he went on in a completely missed attempt to praise the women by saying that he feels for them though since they have more challenges to overcome, such as hormones. <laughs> but nice. But then in came our favorite feminist, Andy Murray, to the rescue. Murray basically asserting the defense that men's tennis draws more fans than women's being subjective versus factual, tweeted the example that many more people would watch Laura Robson play than Sergei Stokowski. Now, this sparked quite the entertaining Twitter battle between the two. And I mean, I don't know, maybe it was the language barrier, but just based on words and not taking sides, not gonna lie, Andy kinda crushed him. Hell yeah! Here's the thing. It's really hard to know for certain, when taking all of the calendar year tournaments into account, if the men's scale weighs heavier than the women's in regards to fan attraction. And even if at this current moment the men do happen to be a bigger attraction, this kind of thing is cyclical. There have been times where the women were the bigger attraction, and who's to say they won't be down the road as well. So can you really change something as significant as prize money based on this argument? I'm not so sure. One area that the men's scale does start to tip a bit though is the amount of sets played at the slams being unequal. If we take a good majority of the tournaments into account, the men do actually make more prize money than the women, and it's actually close to double what the women take in at several of the tournaments. But when it comes to the slams, the prize money is equal, but the set play is not. So. Are we slightly making up for the loss the women suffer through the other tournaments? Or are we perpetuating old school gender inequality views in general that women are weaker in an inferior sex by not also having them play three out of five sets or having the men go down to two out of three? Number one, the women should stay in the bedroom. Number two, they should get to the kitchen. Number three, support the man, support the king. Are we saying that the women are not physically and mentally strong enough to play three out of five sets? And that the two out of three for the men would be too easy and the matches would often be too short? I mean, is that what we're saying here? So here is where the bigger portion of this battle lies. What's the solution? Is there a fair solution? Before I expose what my personal opinion about what the solution could possibly be, I would really love to hear all of your feedback. So please either shoot me an email or leave a comment, and come on, let's get this dialogue going. <laughs> Laura Robson play, then Sergei stuck of... <laughs> what about... Oh, I don't know. Pete Sampras, Rod Laver, Bjorn Borg, Andre Agassi, John McEnroe, Yvonne Lendl, Jimmy Connors, shall I go on? Have these men not helped carry the sport? <laughs>